Good morning. I'm Lynn Carey of Ventura County Master Gardener, and I'll be talking to Joe Kimbrough about the Helpline, a science-based resource we offer to the public. Joe, who is retiring soon after volunteering for 13 years, will give us more information about the Helpline and how people can use it. Today, we're at the Oxnard Historical Farm Park, which is one of the sites in Ventura County that Master Gardeners help maintain. So, Joe, had you always been a gardener? I was raised a gardener. My dad uh, taught me how to garden, and I thought, uh, well, you know, there's not a whole lot they can teach me because I know a lot about gardening. And, uh, right. um, uh, boy, <laughs> when did that turn around? <laughs> uh, come to find out, I didn't know anything about gardening. <laughs> so, what kind of questions do you usually get um, from people? What are the most common questions, for instance, that people are asking? Our number one question is probably leaves. You know, they, they see uh, their tree leaves doing something really weird, and uh, uh, then they'll give us a call. Uh, for instance, like during the, uh, the last drought we had, um, we had a, a severe problem with uh, leaf tip burn. And it's where the uh, leaves on uh, the tips turn brown, and some of them were pretty radical. And uh, people would call in all the time asking what the, what the problem was and how can they fix it. Well, the problem is, there's too many salts in the soil, no rain, so they can't wash away the salt, so the plant absorbs it, and that's what causes the leaf, uh, tip leaf burns. And that's, that was primarily the, the big thing back then. During the whole drought right, situation. Right, during the whole drought situation. So we got a lot of rain, was it last year? Or yeah, the a year before, I believe. year before? Yeah. And we didn't get nearly as many calls. For so, that, yeah. yeah, okay. As a matter of fact, my trees still look good. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what was the most unusual question you ever got? Oh gosh, man, we we get a lot of those. Uh, the a most, lot of unusual. Questions. Yeah, I get. Uh, Julian Hoyle got a, a phone call one time, or a, one time from a from a gal, and this was before uh, cannabis was legal, and uh, she called and she wanted to know if we had a, a, a list of people who might be interested in buying her pot. Uh huh. <laughs> And I told Julian, I said, boy, if it had been me, I'd give her the number of the police station. <laughs> I said, they'd be more than happy to take it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But uh, the strangest one I ever got was uh, a gal that called me, uh, and she had uh, 16 citrus trees. And uh, she said, they're, they're all looking pretty good. And she said, but I'd like to know how to take better care of them, you know, like, like some kind of a... Uh, fertilization uh, regiment or whatever and uh, we got to talking and and, uh, and she says yeah they're all in, in real big pots and uh, and uh, the, the 16 trees? yeah the 16 trees and I said well why are they in the pots and she said well it gets really cold here and uh, they wouldn't last in the ground plus they're in a they're in a greenhouse and I said where are you located and she said oh I'm in Iowa <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, you... You were getting calls from out of state? Oh, we get calls from foreign countries now. Really? Yeah, we get, uh, I got a call from uh, Florida one time, and a guy, of course, there again, I didn't ask him where he was, and uh, he was talking about the base of his stems of all of his plants were turning black, and it sounded like a rot, but I couldn't imagine what it could possibly have been. And, uh, and there again, you know, after talking to him and asking him questions, it come to find out he was located in the Florida Keys. Florida case. Yeah. And uh, I said, well, you need to talk to somebody down there. I said, that's way out of my bailiwick. Really? And uh, I learned something, though. He said that uh, Florida Keys, they don't have soil down there. They don't have what? Soil. No, they have to, no, they have to import uh, all of their uh, soil from bags and at the, the local nurseries. Well, what do they have? Sand? I guess or, sand. <laughs> or, huh. But, uh, that's I never interesting. Thought, I never thought of that either. So yeah. I, learned, I learned a lot. <laughs> Um, yeah. Any other unusual questions? Oh. oh. Well, let me ask you this. Are there any questions that we don't deal with? Oh, yeah. Um, we get calls from people that want us to come over and pull their weeds in their garden. Uh, we don't deal with that. Um, we get some commercial calls, which we don't deal with, but we usually uh, refer them to the, the uh, farm advisors, mm -hmm. and that's what they deal with. Well, about the helpline, um, how can people get answers to their questions uh, now and after the pandemic? And, and how has that affected uh, the helpline? The pandemic has really put a damper on, on the helpline. Uh, we had to re-engineer everything we did. And uh, right now, the only thing we can do is emails. And we have a person assigned to, the, uh, to do the emails one per week. So it's usually from Sunday to Saturday. 
And uh, that's the only way that the people can actually get into the helpline. Is we actually saw an uptick uh, in, in requests during the pandemic. Uh, people were staying home. They didn't have anything else to do, so they're out there putzing around in their gardens. And uh, that's, we saw an uptick there. Uh, in the past, we had uh, the helpline phone, which uh, was usually our number one way of contact. And then we had people come into the office with uh, samples, and we can deal with them that way. And hopefully, uh, with that being said, that when this pand pandemic is open, and probably after June, middle of June, we can open up the office again, and we can have the phone calls and the emails and the walk-in samples. Now, can people send in pictures, or oh, yeah. how do they? Okay. They send in everything. Um, uh, we get a lot of great looking pictures. Um, my co-chair Sue Chittam did a presentation uh, for the executive committee and she used uh, some of the pictures that the, uh, the gardeners were taking and they were just uh, professional looking pictures. And the pictures actually help us now because uh, we, you know, when somebody says that their leaves are turning cr uh, brown, that doesn't really tell us anything. But you give me a picture and I can probably figure out what's going on, or at least try to figure out what's going on with it. Yeah. Um, how do you go about finding out answers you don't know the know off the top of your head? Research. We do a lot of research, uh, but a lot of research that the university is just a, a, a vault of information. And uh, if you call up a, a particular thing like um, Bougainvillea and put in UC Davis after it, uh, it'll come up with everything that UC Davis has on the Bougainvillea. And that's, that's where I get a lot of my information. Uh, we use the integrated pest management. Uh, that's, uh, that's our big crutch right there. Well, could you explain what that is, integrated pest management? It's actually uh, something that the university uh, has put together that covers pretty much all of all the problems you can run in with gardening. And uh, it, it covers uh, pest control, uh, what pests to look for in your plants and what kind of damage they do. It, it covers the uh, beneficial pests as well. Um, it, uh, if you call up, um, say, uh, zucchini, it'll come up with a list of all the diseases that, uh, that will affect the zucchini and uh, the uh, predators that like to chew on the zucchinis or the leaves. And then and all of, also the viral. Uh, occasionally, um, if, we, if we really get stumped, and I, ha I get stumped, and uh, I'll go to what we have like three leads that we go to for, for information. And if they can't answer that question, then they go to the uh, farm advisors. And uh, then the farm advisors will get back to them. And every once in a while we'll get, we'll get a real stumper. Well, after doing this all these years, mm -hmm. what have you learned about gardening and about people? Oh, gosh. Well, what did you, what did you learn about gardening you didn't know? You said you thought oh, you everything. knew everything. everything. And, um, the scientific way of, of dealing with pests and diseases. And, uh, you know, I didn't, when I was gardening, I didn't know what, what a virus looked like on a plant. Uh, you know, I just had uh, a plant that had spots on its leaves. Okay, get over it. <laughs> that's life. <laughs> uh, come to find out that, uh, no, that's, there was a reason for that. Uh, pests, you know, you see, you see to, um, tomato worms, for instance, the horn, horn rib worm, and it's, uh, it's got a, ferocious appetite. Uh, but you know, you can learn a lot about them and where they come from. And, uh, and what do you do about that? I pick them off. Just pick uh, them off? Is yeah. that the best way? That's the, well, yeah, that's the best way. If you can get them young, you can, use, you can spray the plant with BT, which is uh, a, a natural resource, but it's, it's, not a, it's not an insecticide per se. It disrupts the uh, digestive system of the, of the worm itself. But I prefer to pick them off and then throw them out in the, the lawn where the blue jays can get to them, because yeah. they love them. They love them. Yeah, and they're not nice to them at all. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So, uh, what else? Uh, people. People. What have you learned about people? Having dealt with Gardeners all are people? the nicest people you'll ever want to meet. Yeah. Um, in the 13 years that I worked the Helpline, I only got one phone call from an irate customer. And uh, uh, it was in early on in my career. I was probably maybe working Helpline first or second year. And uh, a lady called me and asked me, she had a problem with her roses. And uh, I'm not a rosarian by any means, believe me. Matter of fact, I hate the damn things. Uh, <laughs> and why is that? Because they bite me. Every if I can be, get within five foot of a rose bush, I'll get stabbed. Yeah. And, uh, 
But she, uh, I forgot what the question was, but I told her, I says, well, you know, I don't know the answer, but I have to, I'll do some research and I'll get back to you. Yeah. And she says, well, it's nice to know I'm not the only one that doesn't know anything about roses and slam the phone down in oh. the air. <laughs> that was the only one. Oh. The rest of them were just more than happy to get any kind of help they can. You thought it was fun working on the helpline, all these years. Oh yeah, and uh, you meet a lot of neat people and sometimes you get carried off in conversations. Uh, I had a gal in uh, Wainimi that used to call on a regular basis. I often wonder what happened to her. Um, oh, you had repeat customers. Oh gosh, yeah, she called all the time. And um, uh, she had a guava tree and um, nothing wrong with it. You know, she just always called and says, well, you know, it's looking really good and uh, I feed it this much and I feed it that much. And, and then we get on some conversation about <laughs> some of the stuff she does. And, but she used to call, I'd say for a while, about once a month. Once if, a month. Yeah. And if, if you look at the, the database, we keep track of how many times people call. And she had quite a few numbers after. Yeah. yeah so it was enjoyable. So uh, what will you do now? Oh, I'm still going to work the helpline. I'm not going to go anywhere. Um, You're just not going to be the, the I'm just not going to be a co-chair. Right. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add? I, just that we have a lot of people on the helpline that have a lot of experience. Yes. After the interview, we took a walk around the farm park and noted other kinds of gardening problems that people might encounter. Dr. Faber, when I was talking to him about a question we had on the helpline, he said that uh, Lyme disease is, is a big problem here in California. What is that? It's like uh, oleander leaf squirt, and once the plant gets it, it's doomed. So there's nothing you can do to stop it. Yeah. The leaves turn brown and mangly looking, and they're just really ugly. I asked him if there was a way around that, and he says the best bet was to, to uh, grow California grapes. These are really healthy looking. If, like I said, if you look under the leaves, and you, that's where you're going to find your pests and things, and these don't have anything on them. They look really great. Yeah, they look beautiful. And uh, 